Hey everyone, welcome to Dread No Mondays. Today we're joined by Kirsty Snyder. Kirsty, appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Um, thank you for doing that. If you wouldn't mind, just uh, take a minute and give us a little background on yourself and what you do. Sure, of course. First, Kenny, thanks for having me. It's really good to be here. I am in Colorado Springs. I am a wife and a mom of two crazy boys, and I run a couple businesses at home both with day trading and e-commerce. Love them both. And I like being able to challenge myself while being a mom and a wife and making some good financial gains. Awesome. Awesome. So um, just uh, out of my own curiosity, and if you don't mind, what got you into those businesses? Um, I actually, I responded to a KSL ad and found day trading, didn't know anything about it. I really thought I was supposed to be, you know, the guy on Wall Street, knowing all the ins and outs of the market. And I was very mistaken. And now a few years later, I'm doing what I'm doing and loving it. I'm able to teach people how to day trade and then day trade myself as well. It's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. It's kind of funny how people end up in the professions that they are in. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like I'm in the financial services business and I came about it through my wife's cousin. <laughs> oh, let's see. Funny. <laughs> um, we were talking a little bit off camera. Um, how you're able to keep the mindset of you knowing when, when you're having rough days or whatever, rough moments and stuff, you're, you're able to get your mindset to automatically find the positive. Sure. And something positive in that situation, in that moment, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you mind, let's talk a little bit about how or what the process was on how you got to that point. So I would take the, the, the risk of venturing out to say that it wasn't always the case. Sure. Yep. I mean, just like with anything you get to learn and adapt as time goes on, was I in this mindset a decade ago? No. Was I in this mindset when I was a fourth grader? No. It, was I even in the mindset that I am now even a year ago? No, not even close. But what led me here is, to me, it makes sense to think things are happening for me than just to me. And if other people can experience really great things, whether that's in a relationship, that's financial, that's with, with growth in their physical body or their mental body, then why couldn't I have that? And the common denominator for any of those people, good and bad, was, I felt like, always their mindset. It really spoke true to me that it was something to do with up here than it was someone's just thrown into a circumstance that's crappy or that's good. I like that. And how you pointed out, you know, um, no matter what profession they're in or what background they have or what scenario they find themselves in, sure, all comes down to that one same thing that you've been able to find out discover you know mm -hmm. kind of pinpoint it to that okay you know um so it, it's nice and reassuring to to hear something like that because like oh look at what they've got over here you know this person's so successful you see him on youtube all the time and stuff you know right and you know proper um kudos to them if they've earned it and stuff you know full kudos to them but it's like What's that one thing that they have or what's something that I can do to get there? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, mindset. Okay, I can work on the mindset. That's something I can do. Right. You know? Because that's just like with anything. If it all comes down to me anyway, whether I make a certain amount of money or I do a certain thing with my kids or I start a certain business or help a certain amount of people, what's the common denominator? Myself. Every time. So mindset wise having the idea that happens for me instead of hindering me actually allows me to grow faster than just saying oh man i was thrown into a bad circumstance no to me nothing's bad nor good it just is the only reason we have a definition on it is because we've compared it to something else but that's all our perception anyway again common denominator myself absolutely and I'm, I'm an analogy person. So, you know, for me, it's like, okay, this, this thing happened. Now I, I, I relate it to like uh, a roadblock or a construction, you know, sure. Cutting off your path, you know, 
I can sit here and honk the horn and slam the steering wheel and say a bunch of cuss words. <laughs> sure. Or I can get on Google Maps and find a way around it. Right. Yep. Yep. Victim versus responsible. Are you going to be victim to all the traffic? Or are you going to say, oh my gosh, isn't it Friday at five o'clock? Shouldn't I expect traffic? And what can I do about it instead of just being a little baby in the moment, apparently, you know? Yeah, it's very hard to fight those urges because you're like, oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but exactly that. I can relate to anything, you know, the power goes out at your house. Mm -hmm. you, um, you have a customer that backs out of a contract or mm -hmm. your, your car breaks down or your, your laundry machines break down. Right. It, it can all tie back to that, that one thing of mindset and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and then, um, whether you, like you, like you said, play the victim card or, you know, not. Right. Yep. So what, what has that helped you with, like in the people that you surround yourself with? Like compare two years ago to today or five years ago to today. Oh, wow. Well, it, if it I, changed. I would say because my mindset has grown into everything is happening for me, it's for my benefit. Even if it is, oh man, my laundry, it did this, or I have to change my AC, or, you know, I get in a car wreck, or I get sick, all of those things, I can still choose how I respond to them. And as I decided to be more responsible for how I feel, what I found is the people I associated with maybe a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, either they're no longer in my life as much, or I've found other people to associate with, not because I don't like them, but because as I increased and found empowerment, I found that the people I surrounded myself with also did those things. So it's a like attracts like, energy is the same. It's the quote, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? And as I increased myself and decided to grow, I found others who did the same thing which in turn allows me to be more positive because other people in my life are more positive instead of just a, woe is life, I'm just enduring, I'm just plugging along. No, I'm gonna take the bull by the horns and create the life I want. Absolutely, I like that. And it makes me think of the other analogy that I've heard, um, you know, are your, your story is being written. Are you holding mm -hmm. the pen or do you let someone else hold the pen? Love it, yep, yep. No, so so that, that one hit me, you know, I'm like, holy cow, wake up call. Uh-huh. <laughs> so once I got over that wake up call and I woke up from shock. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You it's know, a good slap to the face. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, sometimes with a, a two by four and sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it wakes you up. So regardless, you yeah. get to decide to do something about getting woken up, you know? Absolutely. And, and then you get to, to go from there. You're like, okay, I'm here now. Now that I've learned this, you know, I can start approaching things a little bit better or a little different. Or sure. you said some of those people in your life may not be in there as much mm -hmm. because of that, you know, not that they, you don't like them or they're not your friends mm -hmm. or just um, the path they chose, you know? Right. Yep. That's, yep. that's their, their choice, their prerogative, whatever, just, Mm -hmm. quite align as much as yours anymore. Um, sure. What was like the process, you know, as your mindset grew with like your family? Um, was it supportive? You know, did they have a lot of support? Were there a bunch of people going, oh, you can't do that. That's only for these kind of people. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Yep. Lots of what I would say naysayers or uh, the trendy term I guess would be you've got haters which to me if someone is saying look Kenny you can't do that that's not possible you're crazy good luck dude you know you're on the right path 
because if their mindset is, wow, that's a lot, oh, hope she can do it, then that says more about them and their and where they are with their mindset than it has anything to do with me. Absolutely. Do I have support with my family and friends? I would like to say so in the way of how I would like to give people support, not even close, but I'm okay with that because I know that what I give out comes back to me. And if someone does that for me, great. If not, I've got my own back anyway. I like that. Because you got to have that, that belief in yourself, that self-support. You know, exactly. I, you mentioned earlier the naysayers. You know, it's kind of it makes me think, you know, a couple of years ago, if someone were to say, you know, that's not possible, I'd probably, mm -hmm. oh, you're probably right. I'll try this or whatever. Uh-huh, exactly. Oh, my root bear, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yep, you know, yep. And, and sometimes it's, it's fun to brag. There sure. are moments of that. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's fun. A lot of times I get the most fulfillment just like, yeah, look what I, I was able to do, you know. Right. Hard tasks and stuff. But then it's like, look what I did, you know, not, not to brag. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> then you're like, it. all right, what's next? Let's, let's go on, mm -hmm. take on the next thing. Exactly. Yep. I think oh. of Roger Bannister. So way back the 50, 60, however many years ago, he was the first one to break the four minute barrier to run a mile. The interesting part isn't that he did it. I mean, great, awesome, good for him. But the more interesting part is um, since that time, I want to say even up to this day, there's 20,000, probably more than that. I would say 30 or 40,000 people who have done it since he did it. So to me, okay, Roger Bannister, this guy who just broke a four minute barrier, no one could run faster than a four minute mile. And since he did it, so many people have done it since. Well, to me, it's not because all of a sudden people got more talented. It was because they saw what was possible that someone else did that they then said, holy cow, I can do that too. He's done it. What makes him any different? Me, my mindset my goals so yeah hold my root beer see how i'm gonna go and, and do something bigger and better you know absolutely you know and um especially once you get some more people around you doing it it makes it easier and you want to to do it even more you know it's exactly. kind of like cool dance. nobody's dancing until like that first one or two people comes to the dance floor then exactly comes out there mm -hmm. so it's it's so important to to see, believe in yourself and see that dream. Cause there'll be times that you're the only one that sees it and believes it. Right. You know, and, and when there were those moments, even in like the last six months, um, what kept you turning towards the positive? Well, I think a lot of it is 2020 vision. If I hold my hand so close right here, it's going to be blurry. Even if I have perfect eyes, right? But when I take a step back, I can always see more clear. And no matter what happens this year, oh no, it's 2020. Oh my gosh, <laughs> have to be so excited for 2021 because it's just been so bad. But has it been? Because looking back a month ago, a year ago, you've come this far to continue going. So no matter what life throws at me, whether it is easy or hard, I can always look back and say, I've done something hard before. This is not going to be any different. I can do something hard again and become stronger because of it. And thank heavens I can, because that's the only way I can grow. Absolutely. It's, it's through the, the pain, essentially, that you, you grow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Climbing into the deep end. You know, and that's, that's interesting that you kind of put it that way, because that's something I've learned quite a um, quite a lot over the past couple of years is tracking those small wins, you know, even in moments that may not seem like much, you know, like, um, just whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I helped this customer with this, you know, this is my, my biggest client to date. Sure. Five, five, five years from now, they might not seem like something, but because you can write it down and now look at, you have a timeline of like, holy cow. Look how far. Mm -hmm. 
and look what I did, you know, and now 2020 looks like this in comparison to what you right. right. Yep. You get to choose how you react and you get to choose how you respond. And I think the majority of the world chooses to react. Life is happening to me. It's in my face. It's too much. When the reality is life gets to be how I make it as cliche as that sounds. It really is that way. And for the longest time, I thought all those quotes were just dumb. Oh, life's what you make it. Oh, you get to respond. Well, whatever, whatever. But the reality is that really is what it is. So I can either be empowered by that and help others do the same, or I can say, no, I'm just going to sit and, you know, whine because whining makes it better. Right. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One of the phrases is common around us is kiss, you know, keep it simple, stupid, you know. Uh-huh. This comes back to that, those simple things, you know, just move forward, learn from mistakes, you know, react versus respond, take the, um, don't be a victim mentality. Right. Yep. And that, I think, goes with anything in life. It's the simplicity of, like you said, oh, your, your washer isn't working. Okay, well cool, go get a new washer or have someone come over and fix it. That's a simple bounce back, I feel like. It's when we get into the mentality that my washer's going to break because everything bad happens to me all the time. Yep, you're right. You're 100% right. Because if your perception is everything crappy happens, that's exactly what you're going to continue to experience because that's what you're seeing. That doesn't have to be your reality. You can choose something different. It's not that hard. Even though we think it is. But hard, hard is what? A rock? What does hard even mean? And if you break that kind of definition down, you're able to bounce back because it actually is not set in stone. It's an idea. An idea can be changed. I like that. There's an idea for you. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I like that. <clears throat> so, um, what what helped you get started, or what were some of the the influencers or the books you read, or things that you know kind of helped you get started in that mindset shift, or or was there like a a light bulb that clicked on, or you know, that all of a sudden, oh, I need to make this change like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. I think a few things. Um, we'll start with books. Book-wise, what got me started on this, I can have better, be better, do better. Um, what is the book called? Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. 100%, that's the one that got me going on all of this kind of stuff. And then I've just read really awesome books since then. Tons about mindset. They all come down to the same thing. It's not, oh, this over here, here's 10 best tips for this and that. It all comes down to the same thing, and that is yourself. And I know I've said that before, but for me to have a rich dad or a poor dad, for me to have a rich mentality or a poor mentality is my choice. So do I just cold turkey one day? No. For me to be in the mentality I am now, it took time. It took some compounding efforts. And now that I'm there, I wouldn't choose anything else because my awareness is so that I want it for everyone else. So I see it in everyone else and I inspire to be that example for everyone else because without it, what's the point? You're either disintegrating or you're growing. And if you're choosing growth, that also means up here in your mind gets to grow. Book wise, oh man, I could name a ton of books that have been awesome. Anything by Napoleon Hill, Bob Proctor, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Darren Hardy. Shoot, there's a lot of them. <laughs> there, there certainly are. You know, there's a lot of a lot of great books, and like you said, they. In a way, they say the same thing, just phrased yeah. differently. 
Sure. And from, from what I found, and um, it's so interesting, it's so awesome, that let's say you're reading Robert Kiyosaki. Okay, okay, so you read this, yep. Then you read um, Napoleon Hill, then you read mm -hmm. Robbins, then you read Grant Cardone or, or whatever. Sure. Back to um, Robert Kiyosaki, like, holy cow, I did not understand what he meant here the first time I read it. But now I get it. Tony Robbins, and you're like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> then, yep. then when your your vision, your mental vision goes from this to this, like, exactly. You you see in everyone, you're like, come look at this. You gotta uh -huh. this out. Exactly. Yeah. You just want everyone to see this stuff, and there's so much over here. You know, it's like going to a buffet, and they're only at one little booth. You know, the, right. the bread. Thing. You're like, no, come check out the lobster. Come check out <laughs> everything exactly. else. They've got right. Pepsi over here. Come get some. <laughs> Root beer. Here. Love as it. much as you want. And you can take it. It's right there. Go grab it. Exactly. Yep. But it's the awareness. Some people, they need to be led to that root beer and the lobster and whatever else instead of settling for just bread. But some people, they don't know that it's there, so they've never thought to expound or do something different. And when someone, for me, for example, with different books, with seeing different things, someone who's making $2 million a month compared to the guy making a hundred grand a year, the only difference is who has the awareness to do so. It's not because they got lucky. It's not because they just happened to land the right job or they climbed the corporate ladder the best no because if that's the case how do you explain the same two sales guys one's making a crap ton of money and one same leads same hours on the job one's not doing as well well mindset that's a hundred percent what it is absolutely you know and with that mindset comes the um willingness to try new things to change Exactly. You could take that same person from the bread and there's lobster over here. It's like, oh, I, I, I don't know. You know, my exactly. dad never tried lobster. My grandpa never tried lobster. <laughs> I, I better stay away from the lobster. Exactly. It's safe over here in the bread. I like my bread. It's very, very soft in my bread bubble. And comforting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and that, that all comes with that mindset growth that you talk about. Mm -hmm. and the awareness and when you have the awareness what you do with it exactly because you know you can get a whole library of those books but if you don't read them or if you don't do anything with that right they're paperweights no pun intended. People, <laughs> people say knowledge is power and i would say awareness is power because i can read all day long i could listen to a book i could talk to great people but until i go back and actually do something about it it doesn't matter the knowledge I have. The awareness leads me to the action. The action is what makes a person different, better, more than who they are today. Thank you. Um, what influence have your mental mindset changes had on your, your husband, your kids, immediate family, friends? What influence have you seen on them and what impact? And I would say, so we'll start with my husband. He jokes all the time and says, oh, you're preaching again. Or, oh, you're coaching me again. But that's okay. Because to me, if I can see in someone else, it's a direct smack to my face to continue being better. That's why I consistently talk about something like mindset, because if it all comes down to me, I want it to be right up in my face 24 seven. My husband and I love that stuff. We are in coaching programs and we're constantly reading books and being able to implement more and more because we want to set an example for our kids. We don't want them to just be content. We want them to grow just like we've been growing. With family, I would say, I would say the majority of my family does not know much about who I am in a moment like this. 
And the reason I say that is because it is, I'm one of nine kids. I'm the second oldest. And for me early on, I adapted a strong mindset because I was, I felt setting an example for my younger siblings. And just with the culture we were raised in, how things were in the neighborhood, I think that it is normal for a lot of my growing up and the people I was with, family, friends, to just be content, which is great. Be content with your life, but don't ever be satisfied. You get to continue growing. And do they know that side of me? To a point, maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't think so, though. And it's because I, I think for myself, I thrive in environments that people already are there, that I resonate with people who build me up in mindset. And my family can do that. They just have a different way of going about it. Thank you. Very traditional. <laughs> what keeps you from, you know, of course, um, not to throw anyone under the bus or anything, but from keep you from sliding back down when you're surrounded by, you know, family and friends that, you know, choose to stay down here. What helps you stay on top of it and keep you continuing to grow instead of coming back down to more comfort and more safe bubble? Sure, sure. So I have friends and family who I would consider my five minute friends my five hour friends, my five day friends, and then my five week friends. And the five week friends are very, very minimal, but they're the people who inspire me the most. My five or five hour friends, five minute to five hour friends are ones who I enjoy being around, but the energy can sometimes deflate for me. Now I have ways to combat that because I want my energy raised all the time. I don't want it to be up and down. I want it to be steady on an upward climb. When I find myself with people, with a circumstance, with even a TV show that kind of taints my energy for who I want to be, I think to myself the word, or I guess the phrase, what would I love right now? So the example of a customer, you've mentioned that a couple times. If I have a customer who ordered, okay, and then backed out and it, it shocked the heck out of me, I didn't see it coming, what would I love right now? Well, I'd love to not be upset and mad at the customer or to feel like I needed that sale or that money, right? So what would I love? Well, my mindset goes, I can't wait to attract more consistent customers or I'm excited decided to make X amount of money, or this is how my website will be. I get into the rhythm of what I want instead of what I don't want. And I think a lot of times people get into a habit, probably a good way to describe it. They get into a habit of this bad thing happened and then this happened and then this and oh my goodness, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, you've said what you don't want. What is it you do want? And I think it's easier for people to say what they don't want because we're in a world that's like that. You look at the news, the media, anything that's happening in 2020, and you could pinpoint exactly where everything is bad because that's what gets talked about. But if I intentionally filter what it is I'm putting in, I can intentionally say, what would I love? Not what would bug me, but what would I love? And my energy automatically increases. I love that. You you find the, the diamond in the rough, so to speak. Exactly. Yep. You know, exactly. And, you know, being able to just make that, that simple, going back to simple steps, making that simple mindset shift, you know. You know, if you're, okay, this happened and this happened and this happened. Okay, what can I learn from it? You know, or why did it happen? Did I do something wrong? Did I make a mistake? Mm -hmm. Get step three or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. to focus on the positive and how you can grow from it and what you want out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes a huge difference. I like that, so. I love that part, Kenny. What, what you just said, um, what can I get out of it? 
goes back to if life's happening to me compared to if life's happening for me. If I have whatever circumstance happen, whether that's something sad and extreme like sickness and health or a financial hurdle or something like, you know, I lost my shirt that I wanted to wear, whatever, as, as big or as small as it is, if it's happening for me, I can decide rather quickly how I'm going to respond instead of just react to it out of habit, out of a humanistic way. I like that. That is, <clears throat> that's very powerful, you know, and it, it makes it, makes it put the control back in your court. I could Exactly. Want. Yep. Like you said earlier, reach out and take the bull by the horns. Sure. You know, if you, if you want something, go get it, go fight for it, take control of it, figure out what you want. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll learn as you go. If, mm -hmm. you, if you make mistakes, you're like, okay, that happened. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to sit here and pout? <laughs> go right. around this roadblock you know, and figure out why that happened and grow from there. Exactly. Just, yep. But if you play the victim mentality, it's putting control in someone else's court mm -hmm. or um, getting rid of that control altogether. Exactly. How many yep. times you honk that horn, that roadblock ain't going to move. Right. <laughs> so you can sit and whine about it, or you can say, what is it I can do to make this circumstance the way that I want? I mean, something simple like a client not showing up for an appointment on time. How could I make sure they show up on time? Well, there are many things I could do, or... I could sit and be mad that they didn't show up on time. Well, whose control is it if I say, hello, how come you didn't show up? Uh, I can sit and whine about it, or I can send a reminder 15 minutes before. I can confirm with them the night before. I can send them a calendar invite. I can um, call them back five minutes later and, and still end our appointment on time. You could put it in a contract. As simple as that is, how can I make sure that that happens if I want that? Well, get innovative because other people solve those things. I'm no different. I can solve it too. Absolutely. And sometimes even being innovative is just finding that someone that does that and seeing what they do and how they handle those situations. Exactly. Like we yep. talked about earlier with the books, you know, see how um, rich dad, poor dad, handles those things or see how Tony Robbins handles those or, you know, just as some examples and then implement some of those and then you'll find a way and a pattern that works for you. So, exactly. Awesome. Love it. Awesome. Well, Kirstie, thank you for taking the time to be here. One last question. Where sure. can people find you if they wanted to reach out to you, get a hold of you, learn more? So they can find me on Facebook, just Kirsty Snyder. And I also have a couple websites they can find me on, primedaytrading.com. I've got a Facebook page. E-commerce will eventually be up, so you guys have to, you get to be patient. <laughs> but you can find me there eventually as well. And then if someone wants to call, reach out, text or email, that's fine as well. Awesome. And we'll also post those links in the description with the podcast as well. So thank you for sharing that. Of course. Everyone, thank you for taking the time to tune in, listen in. And um, we appreciate you doing that. And thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.